Hey, what's up everybody? Captain Kai, the Sea Glass Guy, coming at you today from St. Kitts. Just coming across my first piece of sea glass today that I wanted to pick up. Awesome little orange multicolor, probably from some kind of light source of some sort. Uh, but check out how much sea glass there is at this beach. Millions and millions and millions of pieces from one end of the shore all the way to the other. Got my mom and my friend Melissa with me today. We're doing a quick little sea glass hunt for y'all. As you can see, it's just absolutely loaded here. There used to be an old bottling plant on top of the cliff here, and uh, they would discard all of their old bottles right over the edge of the cliff. Oops. Oh, I see right there, there's a marble. Nice, first marble of the day. I found 115 yesterday, and the day before that I found, uh, I believe, 50, and then the day before that I found another 116. So, I'm pretty good marbling. Most of the marbles I find aren't on the surface like here, but they're actually under the water. Um, so you can snorkel here. You can see the water's really, really clear. If I come out here, you can kind of look down into the water and just see how clear the water is. Kind of poach pieces from the top if you like. But uh, also you can put on the snorkel and just kind of swim around and find really good stuff here. So let's do some hunting. Found a marble. Two marbles. Yeah, and I think I see a red here, so hold on a second. Yeah, looks like a big red right there. Oh, wow. Oh Look at that. God. How do they walk like that? I don't know. Dude, that's beautiful. Cool, huh? You just picked up two marbles? Yep. Right on. Sure, I that's wasn't thinking awesome. there'd be any marbles at all. Wow, some really good stuff here already. That is just I the perfect jewel is. right there. Both sides are really nice, probably from old brake light. Rad. All right. What else you got? Oh, a piece of bonfire already. Uh -huh. and look at this one. There's some colors smashed in there. That's really cool. That's got four different colors to it. And this one? GE. GE. All right, like General Electric or something. Uh -huh. Cool. All right, so we take a stroll down yeah, the beach the here. Okay. I'm going to go back the other way then. All right, so uh, let's do a little bit of hunting here. Let mom get ahead and see what she can find. There's another piece of bonfire right there. So a lot of times these bottles um, would be burned with all the other trash before being cast off of these big old cliffs up there. And then that would always make its way down into the water and start rolling around becoming really nice jewels. That's cool. It's got some blue stripes to it. Sometimes the paint or the, uh, the colored glass or even sometimes colored paper would get trapped between layers of glass. And that's what causes it sometimes in the bonfire glass category. So that's pretty cool. All right. I guess I gotta go the other way so my shadow's not in the way. But uh, yeah, my name's Captain Kai, the Sea Glass Guy, and I am sailing around the world on my boat. Uh, sometimes I'm flying places too to discover all the uh, sea glass beaches that you've never even heard of. And then making videos and showing y'all. Uh, I take people hunting with me sometimes, but I'm never in one place for long because I am constantly traveling. Ooh, see another multicolor. Look at that, another little bonfire. Brown, yellow, and blue all together. So that's pretty neat. Let's go see how Melissa's doing. Check her reaction to the beach. It's her first time here. How's it going, Melissa? Oh, no, I found Oh, yeah, a little bonfire. We we're just talking about this. There we go. Nice. Got some color trapped in there. Got nice your beach coming back. I do, cool. yes. All right, what do you think of this beach? Oh my god. Insane, right? <laughs> I've gone to heaven, right here. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful. Cool. Mom already found a couple marbles. She did? Yeah, they're just kind of like sitting on the surface around here. But, I mean, if you start digging through here, it's, it's insane. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Because you know me, I like green. <laughs> yep. Well, you got all the green you can uh, oh, eat your heart out. <laughs> cool, I'll do a slow pan. Really nice and low and slow, so you can get a close up here. Look how much sea glass there really is in this beach. When I say millions and millions of pieces, I, I'm not exaggerating by any stretch of the imagination. 
It's absolutely loaded here. If you're a crafter or a jewelry maker, this is probably a good beach for you. Oh, look at that. Bonfire heart. That's neat. That's got multiple colors to it as well. Really good bonfire here. And then there's also quite a bit of this honey amber color that I love to find. It's almost an orangish, but uh, it's more of a honey, kind of golden honey color. Not considered orange. And like I said, you can just kind of pick stuff around if you want. Use your feet, move around the beach. And something will just kind of pop right out at you. So yeah, currently I am in St. Kitts. It's an island in the Caribbean. Uh, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning here. It's still nice and cool out. Well, it's probably about 80 degrees right now, but it'll get up to, you know, around 88 or so. Maybe a little less than that. Um, there's not much wind on this side of the island. That's why you're not seeing very many waves at all, which is a good thing. If there's a lot of waves here, it'll be tough to get to this beach. It's quite a hike. Um, sometimes I do swim to this beach, but it's not necessary if you don't know how to swim. Cool, so let's keep going down the beach and see what else we can find. I'll keep, uh, keep the camera low, going slow, so you can uh, see all the stuff I'm just passing up. There's another piece of bonfire right there. Oh, that's a cool one. And you can literally reach down and just pick up a thousand pieces of seagulls. Crazy. What's that? Four marbles. Oh wow, mom's got four marbles now. That's pretty good. And you can see the high tide line from right about up to here. And it's still dry up there, so I don't think anything's changed since the last time I was here a couple days ago. This is a really, really cool beach. Probably one of my favorites. It's definitely the most sea glass concentration that I've seen anywhere in the world. Um, if you go to many places with the sea glass, I've been there. All the ABC Islands, Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao. Um, I've been to Martinique, found sea glass. Cuba, I was just in Cuba and Cayman Islands and found some good sea glass there. Um, found a lot in Puerto Rico. Um, found some just across the way in Nevis. That's that mountain way back there. Technically a volcano that's dormant. Never know when that's going to pop. Um, let's see, I found quite a bit in the U.S. as well. Those are kind of secret spots. And then, uh, ooh, marble. Sitting there right on the top. I didn't even see it. Do you see it? Cool. Let's grab it. Nice. That's a small marble. That's been rolling around for a long time. Most people don't realize that uh, sea glass actually has an expiration date to it. Uh, after a while, eventually it all turns right back into sand. That is the process that's going on here. That's why all the pieces are so smooth, no longer jagged and sharp, because they're slowly getting transitioned back to once they originally were. All thanks to Mother Ocean. How cool is it that she takes our trash and transforms it into jewels? Really cool. So yeah, just tons and tons of good stuff. Like I said, there was a Coca-Cola bottling plant here. You can kind of see the lines running down the sea foam. Um, and that's indicative of a older Coca-Cola bottle. Oh, here's another marble just staring me in the face. Can you see it? There we go. Not even counting, but I think that's like three marbles for me. Like I said, uh, about 115 yesterday. So it was a pretty good day. Uh, my record in Bonaire is 166. And most of those marbles were peewees. Uh, meaning, like I said, they're almost turned completely back in the sand. Some of them are the size of BBs. But the ones I'm finding here in St. Kitts are, for the most part, still pretty big. But uh, they're also very old. Some people are wondering if they were seeded. And uh, I highly doubt that because many of these are very antique marbles, which are, um, you know, without going in the sea, are already worth pretty good money. So it would be kind of a waste of money for somebody to throw a bunch of expensive marbles in the water. Um, and also, they're very frosty. Um, and the amount of wave action they get on the beach of refining isn't much, so to get the frostiness that, they're, uh, that they've acquired, they would have to have been in the water for quite a long time. And then also kind of dating all the other trash I'm finding, or sea glass, or pottery, um, you can kind of tell. Oh, there's two more marbles right there. And they're really camouflaged. Mom walked right over all this. So here's one marble. And here's the other. These are cat size. These aren't necessarily older marbles, uh, but you can tell by their size, and kind of by the date of when this was a dump. 
that these are probably from the 60s or 70s so pretty dang cool um, people wonder all the time why are there so many marbles and uh, there's a lot of reasons you know a lot of things were uh, had marbles in them like spray paint cans for instance every spray paint can if you shake it you hear that ball on the inside that's a glass marble um, so you find those a lot at dumps also bottles some types of bottles like tar bottles would have a marble in the top and that would keep the carbonation in um, but for the most part the reason that there is a lot of marbles at these beaches is because every kid back in the day especially in the Caribbean it was a big thing here every kid had tons and tons of marbles and they would uh, shoot them with slingshots off and into the ocean um, you would finish drinking your soda you'd put the top back on throw it in the water and they take turns trying to shoot it trying to pop the bottle um, but also every single kid did have marbles and eventually every kid moved away from home and mom got tired of sucking them from their vacuum or having to move them around or deal with them and threw them away like any other trash. And because glass kind of sticks around, it doesn't float away like rubber or plastic, it doesn't degrade like metal, and because it's the same consistency, mass and volume as sand and coral, it sticks around, hangs out with the sand and coral and just slowly over time becomes nice, frosty, beautiful jewels like the, uh, the ones I'm picking up now. So pretty rad. We were definitely allowed to bring sea glass here uh, back home to wherever you live. Um, typically I bring all my best finds in my carry-on and then I will check all my like bulk amounts of sea glass um, in my check bag. So there's a nice piece of pirate glass there. Put some light behind it. See if we can get some light behind it. Yeah, you can see it's a nice like drab, all of green. It's really cool. It's called pirate glass because it kind of looks like it's black while it's on the ground. Um, but then when you pick it up, usually they got some color to them if you put a light behind it. Now, there's not too many cobalt blues at this particular beach, but the one I was at yesterday was loaded with really, really big, big blue pieces. Look at the size of some of these jewels. Just up. And these are all black sand beaches here because this is a volcanic island. Um, you'll typically find black sand beaches on most islands. Look at that piece of bonfire, that's cool. It's got some red and some blue and some white kind of trapped in it. Wow, almost reminds me of like uh, like the amber on Jurassic Park. With a little mosquito caught inside, that's neat. That's a really cool piece. I was just looking at a big sea foam here. And, oh, nope, it's still here, it's just underneath. Look at that, it's just a nice part of an old Coca-Cola bottle bottom. Pretty sweet. Let's keep going low and slow because I'm finding marbles that I'm not really seeing them. Uh, they're just kind of hopping out at me. So you found a few more marbles? Yes, I did. How many? That's them right there. Nice. Four, I think I got four as well, or maybe five or six. Let's see a piece of bonfire right here. Got an oh, S trapped nice in it. One. So how would you compare this beach to other places you've been? Oh my gosh, there's so much glass. You, you can't even you can't even compare it. So um, compared to uh, Sea Glass Island. Oh, way more. Way more and way jewelry. More. You here, don't right? have to fight the coral. <laughs> yeah, and this is much more frosty, right? Oh, so well worn. Jewelry oh. quality, almost every piece. Insane. Yeah. Insane. Insane. Well worth the, well worth the hike. hike. Good to hear it. There's Melissa back there. She popped the squat and is uh, searching for some stuff as well. Hopefully, we all find some really good stuff. And I'm stoked about that orange that I found right off the bat, and then the red I found uh, when I ran over to check out my mom's marbles. So, pretty cool. Just don't know what you're gonna find here. There's a piece of uh, old Coca-Cola bottle. I say you see the L A there at the end. Just a little bit, and then, ooh, nice cornflower blue. It's almost a grayish blue. Let's put some light behind that one. Oh, it almost looks white in the light, but that is a nice color. Cool. This is a nice little section we could dig up. What do you say? All right, first, you just kind of do a slow pan across the top, see what we can see before we start digging. Once you start digging, you kind of lose all the stuff on the surface. So the way to dig a pile is you come to the base of it, okay, and you want to pull stuff towards you. Obviously, it's easier to pull down here. Now, if I start pulling from the very top, I'm just going to kind of cover up 
all the stuff here. So you want to start right at the base, right before the sea glass starts, and then you start kicking it down. And really cool stuff will just fall out at your feet like that. A uh, piece of cobalt blue lips right there. So let's keep kicking. And some of these piles are huge. I mean, over there, those piles are probably three feet tall. You could be here all day digging. You definitely want to bring uh, some sunscreen and some water and some snacks. See a little hermit crab there. We don't want to kick him underneath the pile, so we'll put him up top. There you go, honey. Nice. Now, one thing you can look out here for in particular is sea glass hearts. They are they're pretty rare in most places to find a perfect heart, but here you can find loads of them. Obviously, there's lots of little wonky hearts too. Almost a heart shape, but not quite. Um, but yeah, always fun to pick up the heart shaped pieces. And hope everybody had a good Valentine's Day a couple weeks ago. All right. Wow, just such cool big pieces here. Um, you don't find much pink, purple, um, yellow. Not too much electric blue at this beach. But again, uh, there's several beaches here on St. Kitts. I guess you could say there's four pretty good beaches all in all, but this is by far um, the highest concentration of sea glass. But the one I was at yesterday had way more marbles um, and way more one-of-a-kind pieces. So kind of cool. You can, uh, even if you just go to those two beaches, you're going to have a great time here in St. Kitts. There's some awesome uh, hotels here and Airbnbs. It's a really small island, so you can kind of stay anywhere on the island. Uh, and get around without much fuss. Uh, I guess from one end, like the furthest end to the furthest end of the island is maybe 40 minutes. But if you stay somewhere central, you're pretty much close to absolutely everything. That's on the bottom mouth there. Cool, so I'm guessing my mom didn't walk too far past this. She doesn't like to scramble over the rocks so much if she has to. See, there's some sea coins up here. Um, so I'm gonna walk down that way with y'all. We'll check out and see what else we can find. Almost sea coins, just really nice old bottle bottoms. A lot of people ask me, what is a sea coin? This is not, this is a bottle bottom. But had this bottle bottom stayed a perfect circle and it was completely frosty on both sides, meaning none of these little defects where you can see the shiny parts, then it would be considered a sea coin. But it has to be a perfect circle of glass. But these are still cool bottle bottoms, worth picking up. They make nice stands uh, for putting your sea glass on, but also you can like stack pieces on top of them too, always cool to make a sea glass stack. So yeah, we'll stick to the low tide range right here. Um, tides only change about a couple feet a day here, so there's not really much of a range, but stuff does get mixed up constantly, no matter where the low tide mark's at. Um, so let's look over here. I can tell there's no footprints. I think my mom must have stopped right back there. Oh, nope, I do see a footprint. So that means she just walked right over the sea point without seeing it. Or, it's still wet, could have just washed up, hard to say. But see how that's a perfect circle? And man, you can see how well worn that sea glass is. See all those little dings, those little sea marks from decades and decades of being on the water getting frosty? That's awesome. And then you look on the other side, also perfect. No, uh, no broken sharp parts or shinies or nothing. It's a nice, perfect sea coin right there. Can't believe mom walked right over that. I guess it could have washed up. All right, so let's keep it going. See what else we can find down this direction. Now there's uh, a lot of rusty stuff here, and sometimes the sea glass sits in a you know a pile or a puddle of rust. It'll start to take on a uh, kind of brownish, rusty hue. So for example, you can kind of see this is actually a clear piece of sea glass, but it looks a little yellow tinge almost, and that's because they used to. <laughs> Take all the factory equipment when the bottling plant closed down and threw all of it over this cliff. And so if you look around, you can just see scrap iron literally everywhere. I thought I saw something here. Oh. thought this was a uh, color stick. Cool, a little bit of bonfire there. Uh, we're gonna spend quite a few hours here digging up and finding the best stuff. You can really be picky on a beach like this. Because there's just so much to, to see, so much to pick up. Alright. So, let's keep our eyes peeled. I did find a really cool red and orange, uh, I guess last year when I came here, right around this section. But there's so much to look at, so much 
it's a scan and it's, it's kind of tough to, to see a lot of stuff like those marbles I caught just a minute ago wasn't even looking for those didn't even see those bent down for another piece and boom there they are so keeping our eyes peeled this is a pretty cool little pile here it's kind of up high maybe we can dig this out a little bit I'm in the shade I hope you guys can still see all right Um, so if you're interested in coming to St. Kitts, uh, send me a message. Uh, I know a guy who does tours here, if that's something you're interested in. Uh, but always happy to help. They used to make Sprite here as well, so you can see there's a lot of pieces of old Sprite bottles. This one's not super frosty. This was uh, painted on um, rather than embossed. Uh, but sometimes this paint gets trapped between the layers. And we get a really cool piece of bonfire Sprite glass. And I found one the other day when I was here. You checked it. On my uh, last video from like two days ago, if you want to check that out, it was the first piece that I show. But man, these are just such perfectly frosty pendants here. That's rad. That's rad. Cool. Um, let's keep kicking around. See if anything hops out at us. Yeah. I mean, there's good stuff. I'll pick all that up later. All the good pieces. Uh, I don't like not holding the camera and talking to y'all. Let's explore and try to find something really cool. Well, there's not too much further on this beach to go. And you really got to be careful. If you fall and slip here, um, there's no cell phone service. That's why I'm not live. And uh, it'd be tough for anybody to come down here and save you. They'd probably have to put a, a ladder track at the top of the cliff and send down a basket for you. Big blue right there. Huge cobalt. Nice and frosty. That's a big piece. Cool. Good find there. Not too much pottery at this beach. Uh, not too much for dominoes. But you can see it's got lots of other good stuff. Just look at these piles. Isn't that cool? All the old machinery. This looks like it was some kind of tractor. So it looks like wheels on both sides. Yeah. And then you can see uh, the drive shaft there. Maybe a tractor. Who knows? Bulldozer. <laughs> Big piece of equipment for sure. Put myself in there for a perspective. Alright, so let's keep it going. Come around the corner here. Now there's a lot of stuff that's kind of up against the bank that hasn't made it into the water yet. They don't really have too big of waves here, so it's hard for all the glass to make it down to the water. So you'll find some stuff that's still pretty sharp uh, up in the high, high tide range. But here at the lower tide, Cross as it gets. Nice, nice dark green pieces here. That one's got a good chip to it, so I'll throw it back in. Wow, just the same. There's uh, some seashells and stuff. If you decide to swim to this beach, there's tons of sand dollars under the surface. I've never seen so many actually. Uh, but they're pretty fragile, and obviously, if you see them in the water, they're probably still alive, so you don't want to take those. Uh, lots of starfish too, those are always cool to see. You never want to take them out of the water, they can't breathe. Um, they can't hold their breath as long as you can actually. So starfish die really quick out of the water, I mean like within a minute. Um, so you, sometimes, sometimes you can pick them up, but you want to keep them underwater if you're doing that. You never want to bring them above the surface. Right on, big, big sea foams. I'm going to hop, skip and jump over this cliff and see if there's anything on the other side for us. Some kind of ceramic ball there. All right, let's see. Ooh, be careful. It scared me, I thought it was like somebody's teeth at first. Some kind of uh, bean of sorts. All right, cool. So uh, I don't think there's any snakes here. There's definitely no sea snakes. I looked that up this morning. Apparently there's no sea snakes in all of the Caribbean and Atlantic. Somebody told me they thought they'd seen one. And I was like, no way. Looked it up, yep, it's probably an eel. So, kind of cool though. Alright, so we got one more little section here. Not sure exactly how I'm going to climb down this cliff, but I think I'll go around this way. If we look back that way, you can see Mom and Melissa. Alright, they're entranced by the uh, amazing sea glass here. Now you got to be careful. Like rocks like that will fall down on your head, and then you die. So, we'll kick that one off. Looks like this one might break too. Yeah, that'll ruin your day. 
Okay, so I'm gonna try to make myself a step here. Ta-da! Cool. All right. So down this next section of the beach, obviously it's kind of in the hook of the bay, so it doesn't get nearly as much waves as the uh, center of the bay where you're finding all the big piles of sea glass. So it's more big piles of rocks over here. And yeah, not seeing much at all. But you never know, it's always worth walking to the end of the beach and checking to see if there's anything else to find. It's almost always worth it, even if it's just for the exercise or just to see something new. But here we are at the end of the beach. We've walked all of Sea Glass Heaven St. Kitts together, and I hope you enjoyed it. We found some good stuff, especially there at the beginning, uh, which is usually the case. Get all the stuff on the surface. Now it's time for the hard work, digging everything up, digging through those piles, and uh, finding some good stuff. But I'm also going to be uh, snorkeling as well. Like I said, you can go underwater here and find some just absolutely rad pieces just under the surface. You don't even have to be able to swim. You can just hang out in about two feet of water and the stuff is just churning under. And if you think the piles are big on the beach, you should see the piles underwater. I'll be bringing my GoPro with me in case I find some really good stuff. And uh, once I get back home or to my boat, I'll be posting all of these GoPro videos, both on Facebook and on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash The Board Pirate. So check that out. Uh, if you'd like to support this show, if you like what you're seeing, you like what I'm doing, you can go to gofundme.com slash clone LC. Trying to bring my dog back who passed away from brain cancer recently. I'm just a mess without her, so appreciate any help. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and follow the page, and please, please share with your friends. Tell everybody you know who you think might appreciate also watching uh, my channel. Woo. All right, so have a great day. Make sure to get your passport so you can come check out St. Kitts, and don't forget to pick up some trash while you're at the beach. Thanks, guys. Take care. Yeah, that's it.